Hello everyone and welcome to Quick Safe TV. I hope you had a great day and if you didn't, just stay, uh, just just sit a while and listen and see what I have to say about usable items and some of the miscellaneous item items in Jagged Alliance back in action. Now again, as always, as with the previous videos, this is based off of the demo. Now it might or might not make it back into the game, in, into the final game, but I expect it to make into the final game, however it might not, so if it doesn't, just don't get really frustrated. Chances are slim that it doesn't, but still, I have to make it clear. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and pick up all the items I was able to find in the demo, which are uh, uh, use useful items, which are counted as additional items. Now, what do we have? We have a lot of stuff here, right? So, let's just go ahead and sort them out, one from another. Grenades to one place, medical stuff to another place, more grenades, more medical stuff, other weird stuff, more grenades, nah, grenades are good. Grenades are very, very nice indeed, locksmith kit, okay. Now, let's just talk about different things. Where to start? <laughs> let's just go through the list. We have a lot of items in the game, in Jagged Lions, back in action, which are used by specific specialists. Specialists in medical, explosives, st uh, no, no, excuse me, mechanical, and mechanical. Now, medical, generally, is everything that is connected with healing other mercenaries. Therefore, having a good medical specialist in your team would be very useful for you. Why? Because if you get hurt, and there's no one to stop the bleeding and restore the health, suddenly your squad is half as strong as it was before. Even worse, even more so, if you lose one of your mercenaries, all the achievements, all of his statistics, all of his experience will go to waste. Avoid it at all costs and try to use, utilize different medical tools we have right here. Now, explosives allow you to breach specific obstacles and allow you to make specific uh, interesting distractions to the enemy soldiers, which will allow you to act and sometimes get into specific places without much of a bother. Mechanical skills allow you to pick lock doors and repair items. Now, I'm not sure if it also applies to repairing apparel, however, it applies to repairing weaponry. Now, each of the items, I will, I will be able to show it to you on the example of medical, much better than anything else, because I have most of the medical stuff here. Now, each of the medical items, as it follows right here, from syringe to large medkit, vary in strength. However, they also vary in the uh, required medical skill. So the better the item, the more medical skill it requires. For example, almost everyone can use a sitting, right? a syringe. You just need 20 medical skill to do it. But it's quite useless as such, and it doesn't really do anything. It just restores health. It doesn't stop the bleeding. Remember it. So if it doesn't stop the bleeding, the, the your mercenary will still bleed out. Now the next one is the bandage, which allows you to restore health, some health, and stop bleeding. It requires 40 medical, however, so not everyone has, for example, Fidel, our good Sir Fidel, doesn't have 40 medical, he has only 30. Therefore, again, as I said, good medic is very important. Med kit requires 50, but even better, stops bleeding, even better, even more hit points are restored upon using it, and yeah, it's just really, really good. And then the large med kit, the best of them all, has the most charges and allows you to do essentially the same thing and probably even stronger. Now, as it follows, yes, the, the sitting, syringe again uh, has lower weight, however, uh, also has less charges. Now, for experienced players with Jagged Alliance 2, uh, I'm not sure about Jagged Alliance 1, but Jagged Alliance 2, I can talk about, um, unlike in Jagged Alliance 2, you will not be able to beat the game while using only one medkit. Okay, that's very simple. So basically before you could just give to each of your mercenaries one medkit, one small medkit, and they would be able to use it no matter what, no problem, you don't really need a medic. And because of the way durability would work, usually the, um, excuse me for this microphone, usually the durability would not run out. Here we have specific amount of charges which are used every time you use the item, whether you succeed or fail. So for example, if you tell your medic to heal someone and he fails, doesn't really heal anyone, he still consumes one of the charges of the item. So therefore, having items generally with higher charges is better. However, you have to remember some items will just not have many charges, such as C4, uh, such as explosives, such as explosives. Yes, the canteen for some reason doesn't have any charges. I don't follow 
how is that logical? Continues used as medical item and doesn't have any uh, charges. Just has one charge. I, I really don't understand why, but fine. Let it be like this. Now that we talked about consumables, you will be not really consumables, usables. Let's talk a bit about grenades. Now, grenades, just like uh, just like usable items, are equipped on the left hand slot. Just like I think it was like this in Jacket Alliance One, you have the weapon slot and the usable slot. Let's go ahead and equip a couple of grenades and just throw them around. Let's use the simple frag grenade. Notice that each of the grenades has three charges. That means that when you buy or take or find one grenade, this grenade will have three charges with it. Therefore, you can indiscriminately throw grenades all over the place and don't be so worried about charges. Let's go ahead and throw a grenade over there. This is the simple frag grenade. Let's see what it does. If it explodes or if it doesn't explode. It explodes. Generally, grenades are situational, can deal a tremendous amount of damage and even kill the enemies outright if they do not notice it. Chances are, however, that they will notice the grenade, so the grenades can be easily used to lure the enemies out of their position or just destroy their defensive formations. This is the stun grenade. Unlike the frag grenade, it doesn't deal direct damage, but it stuns the enemies for several seconds, up to 10 seconds if I'm not mistaken. And if they get into the, the, the uh, radius, it stuns them, allowing you to get in and finish them off really quickly. Very, very powerful tool. Do not underestimate it, especially if the enemy has it. Now, gas grenade is a very annoying little crap, which, upon throwing, it releases the gas all over the place around it. And if you or the enemy are inside this uh, area of effect of this grenade, you will slowly lose health. Let me just go ahead and demonstrate it an example of Fidel. You see, as you are standing inside there, and if you stay for too long, you also get stunned. The way against it, the only way against it is to have a gas mask or not to get in the goddamn radius. That's the simple idea. Let's go ahead and heal the Fidel a little bit. He just lost. He just lost some health. Let's restore it. Very good, Mr. Fidel. Very good. Now let's go ahead and equip the smoke grenade. Smoke grenade, unlike other grenades, is not used for... How to put it? It's not used for damaging the enemies. It's a tactical device. Let's imagine that... Right now I'm standing here, right? R right now I'm standing over there. I want to get behind this house. However, on this side of the road, there are 300 machine gunners which are aiming at me and shooting all over the place. Now, if I only get out here, I will be dead because they will be able to shoot me indiscriminately and they will always succeed in hitting me. Now let's throw a bunch of grenades over there. Let's throw it here, there, and over there. Let's hope it works. It worked kinda. Now, as we wait for the smoke to spread all over the place, we can easily run through this smoke or behind this smoke, not allowing the enemies to hit us directly, and finally reach our objective. Now, if you use smoke grenades wis wisely, you're gonna love them because of the amount of things you can do with them. The smoke stands for a couple of seconds, for, for you know, let's say half, I don't know how to say, like half a minute, 30 seconds, 20 seconds. Whatever is the time, it will allow you to easily, look at this. Look at this, easily move through the smoke. And people who have to watch through the smoke, who have to aim through the smoke, they will not be able to aim at you or hit you effectively. I am not aware if the enemy uses suppression fire, but direct attacks will be impossible. Now that we talked about all the usables, consumables and grenades, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about miscellaneous items. Generally, miscellaneous items are useless crap which you will find in your travels. I am not aware how you use oranges and apples, I'm really not sure. I'll go ahead and make a little test. I'm gonna get hurt and use some of my stamina in order to see if it's useful or not. However, there's one item I would also like to show you, which is called the um, military data or something like this. So this military data says that if you find enough of those you will be able to find out who was financing Di Dejiana in her uh, in like supporting Dijiana in her usurping the power in Arulco. Now this is the file. Military intel. I think it's a bit of a spoiler, but it doesn't really tell anything. So if you find a lot of military intel, it will unlock probably a secret mission which you will be able to complete. Other items you see here is water, we have bananas, we have medicine, which is not really useful. Generally, this is items without charges, but not be mistaken. Some of the ammunition types also look like miscellaneous items, but they are actually useful. For example, like rockets. Look at this. Rockets has... I, I assume rockets are used for something. <laughs> rockets have... Uh, they're also 
usually in the group of one, right? And they look like miscellaneous, not very really useful items, but they actually are. So be careful and wade through these things. As you will be able to read the descriptions for them, you will find out what they work, how they work, what they are for. I think this energy bar actually is useful to restore energy. I'm not really sure. Now let's go ahead and exhaust Fidel a little bit to test how the fruits and energy bars work. I'm really not sure about it, but I'm just going to go ahead and test it. So generally, this is all I wanted to tell you about, except for the... Let's, let's test the energy bars and everything. It should restore the energy. As our energy slowly fades away, let's go ahead and see what the fruits do. What fruits do? Let's, uh, let's eat the fruit. We ate the fruit. Aha, we restored some energy. Okay, so fruits restore an energy. I don't think about hit points, but they restore the energy. And the energy bar? It restores the energy again. So as you can see, you can eat these things, eat the, eat fruits and vegetables and whatever, whatnot. Keep them with you in order to quickly restore the energy when you need to sprint a lot. So you sp you, you you run away from the enemies and you run out of energy. You cannot run anymore. Just eat the fruit and run again. Now, I thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any additional questions, go ahead and ask them. Uh, if you enjoyed the content and liked my commentary, please go ahead subscribe to show your support for my work and to support me. Have a great day. Bye bye, and stay tuned for more content. And. Yeah, bye-bye! <laughs>